So, uh, so we kind of have this problem set up now at this point where um, I'm trying to trying to separate, or at least in some sense, uh, uh, come up with a much more, a little bit more of a cleaner design where I can separate the 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 error the the handling of the error error part separate from the actual the actual value that is being computed as my as my function as my function function runs so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to say all right let's let's, let's somehow use use the type class monad so um, so first thing I'm going to say is okay look what if I what if I make maybe an instance of my monads uh, monad type class so uh, if I do that I can say all right let's let's say instance instance uh, monad and uh, in my first video we saw that it takes in uh, the M is basically something that has a kind that goes from a star from a star to a star that's the kind that's a kind for all the M's inside inside monad and maybe the the type constructor maybe has the same kind where it takes in a star and uh, it takes in some some concrete type uh, and uh, gives you back another concrete type. So I can say let's let's make maybe a monad, and uh, if I do that, uh, uh, so I have maybe at this point here, where, where, and I'm just going to implement uh, two of these methods here: the the return method and the bind bind method. So again, just to recap, uh, what was the what was the return return method? The signature for the return. For the for the return return method inside the type class monad is something that takes in a value, some kind of a value of type a, and returns back to you m of a, and likewise uh, likewise uh, for the bind for the bind operator the 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 type the type was uh, it takes in it basically takes in an a. And uh, uh, in this case, actually, it starts with a monadic value. So, uh, so let's say it takes in something of type M A. It then takes in a function that goes from A to M B, and then it gives you back as an output M B. All right. Now the question is, what is my M here? My M here is basically in this case, wherever you see M is basically going to be now maybe. All right. So uh, if M becomes a maybe, how am I going to implement? How am I going to implement my my return return method. So the return method inside inside here inside here could look like. Remember, I'm in a type world now. So in the type, oh sorry, I'm in the I'm in the value world. I'm just going to just going to implement this. So in, when I'm in the value world, I'm going to take the help of this uh, of the of the type world to guide me as to what am I what am I going to pass in pass in as my uh, how am I going to complete complete the implementation here. So return says all right. It could take in anything, any kind of a value of some some type here. There's no restriction on a type variable a. So let's say return of some value x. That is going to be equal to that's going to be equal to something that happens to be of type maybe of a, right? So in this case, if I take my value x and I put it in some default default context, right? This is going to result in this is going to result in just of x. All right. So I've taken that value, the actual pure value devoid of any context, and just wrapping it up. I'm just wrapping it up in some minimal, minimal context. Okay. And uh, likewise, if I were to implement the bind operator, the bind operator, okay, so the implement the bind operator, it takes in some value, some 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 value, uh, in this case uh, m of a, m again being maybe, so maybe of a. So let's say it takes in some, let's perform pattern matching. So let's say is let's say just of x that's the first value m of a and then it takes in a function it takes in a function over there the second parameter so let's say it takes in a function f this is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to something that is of type m of b meaning maybe of b here so i can set this point this entire thing is i'm going to take my function f apply it apply it on this a which has been wrapped up in this in this in this context of m of a. So first thing I need to tear this part. I need to get this a outside that context, right? And that's why I'm using pattern matching here to get this x, the, the actual x that has been wrapped inside it, to get it get it outside. And the moment I've got this x outside, I can just say f of x. F of x that is going to execute this function. 
that's going to return back something of type m of b in which case this entire thing this entire output over here is going to be of type m of b likewise continuing with the continuing with the pattern matching i can now say at this point um, i can now set this point here this is also going to be nothing and f in which case this entire thing results back in nothing okay so what i've done here is i've done two well actually i've done one important thing here the one important thing here is i've made my type maybe an instance i've made my uh, uh maybe type constructor an instance of the monad monad type class okay so knowing this now knowing this now can i can i somehow rewrite this entire thing can i rewrite my eval eval a, a little bit more a little bit more with a little bit more clarity so so the signature remains as it is the signature doesn't change that's still the signature because i still it may or may not return back an integer but now i'm going to say i'm going to say uh eval eval of con of a is going to return back instead of saying previous are saying just of a but now i'm going to say in this case i'm just going to say i'm just going to say return 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 a okay what does return a do in this case well this method return gets executed on a right and it's just going to give you back just of x this entire thing is going to result back to you in just of x okay likewise let's do this uh, uh on my second term which is the div of t1 and t2 what is this going to be equal to okay now now this is a little bit interesting here so first thing let's just think about this what is what is t1 and what is t2 what's the type of t1 and t2 well the type of t1 and t2 is just terms these are actually terms right the, the type of t1 and t2 uh in this case is just a term it's just a term and it's just a term there okay so if i if i call eval on t1 if i if i call eval okay so again let me be consistent with my colors here if i call eval if i call eval on t1 what is this going to result in this is going to result in this entire thing is going to result in something of type maybe an integer okay if this is going to result in something of type maybe an integer all right i'm going to take that entire the, the entire value of type maybe an integer and will perform the bind operator and will perform the bind operator that I have just I've just implemented right there this is the implementation to my bind bind operator I'm going to implement this oh in this case I'm just going to call the bind operator on eval of t1 okay so remember the first parameter into the bind operator is something of type maybe of maybe of a in which case is right there eval of t1 I then need to pass in a function. I then need to pass in a function that takes in that takes in uh, 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 this 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 a that has been extracted out of this monadic value. Okay, so I'm just going to say okay, let's let's have it taken a function. Okay, so I'm just going to say let's take in a function that takes in this value x. Okay, whatever this x is basically is just the integer part. I'm just extracting out if this if this if this entire thing if this entire thing results in something called just just of some x then i'm going to extract that x out i'm going to extract that x out i'm going to feed it into this function over here okay and when i feed it into this function over here uh what i'm going to do at this point is i'm just going to say okay take that take that piece uh, uh take this function over here and this function is going to turn back something to you of type m of b okay so before it turns back to something of type m of b here okay so this is my function let's just use my parenthesis there just to separate things out a little bit more with clarity there okay so i'm passing the function that takes in this is this entire function let's say this entire function this is f here i'm just writing the entire function as an anonymous function right this entire thing that i'm pass just completing over here is that function is that function f which is goes from a to m of b okay now what should this function return back to you this function should return back to you something of type m of b all right in this case being maybe maybe 
uh, 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 b more specifically in this case is still going to be an integer so i'm just going to say maybe of of an integer all right so this is just a function that um, that goes from a to m of b so i'm going to say all right let's take this let's take this and uh, let's perform one more step here so i'm going to say eval eval on on t2 okay what does eval on t2 return back to you eval on t2 returns back to you something that that is also maybe an integer the output the output value of eval of t2 the type of that is going to be maybe an integer so i'm going to take that entire thing and i'm going to again feed it i'm again going to feed it by using the bind operator in, by using a bind operator into another method into another method over here okay let's call this uh, i'm using another anonymous function y okay another anonymous function that takes in as a first parameter something of uh, 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 in this in this variable y here which is going to be going to be equal to this function over here is going to turn back something that is going to be x x divided by y now because this function over here returns back to you something that is just an integer and the guidelines tells me that if i were to use the bind operator if i were to use the bind operator because I'm using the bind operator again in a nested form right there. The function that is the second parameter into the bind operator should return back to you something that is, that is in this case, maybe an integer. It cannot just be an integer right there. So I'm going to take this entire thing and uh, wrap it around some minimal context, which is the return of x divided by y. Okay. And uh, I'm hoping that I've got my parentheses correctly matched up. Okay, so again, just from this F over here in pink, this F over here in pink is this entire thing, starting from this point all the way to the very end. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, now if I look at this entire expression right here, I know this, this is still a little bit messy, and there's a way to dish, uh, to actually uh, make it a little bit better by using the do while. Not a do while. Do while is basically uh, a loop in imperative programming languages, but just using the, uh, the the do block in in Haskell. But that's for the next video. But what I've done here so far is, um, if you look at this entire piece right there, okay, this entire piece, the implementation in this orange is exactly identical to this what I have in green here. So think about this. This bind operator. The way this works is that if this value eval on t1 if this results in a nothing if this results in a nothing then what does it do well if it results in a nothing the entire output the entire output is going to be nothing as well so this entire thing the entire ping box is going to result back is going to result back in nothing if eval of t1 is actually nothing but if eval of t1 results back into let's say just of x okay if it results back in something which is just of x here then what does what does the bind operator do? Well, the bind operator says I'm going to compute f of x. Okay, going to compute f on this x over here. So what it does is uh, if this results in let's say just of x, I take that x, I take that x as my as my as my input, and uh, further on I have this next subsequent set of bind operators, a nested level bind operators that does an eval on t2, and if this eval on t2 results into a nothing. Then this entire piece, this entire sub method is going to result back into a nothing. Okay, and if it results back into nothing, then this entire piece results back into nothing, which is also identical to this statement right here. Okay, so again, just let me use some colors over here just to understand um, what's happening. This piece over here, this piece over here is identical if this entire thing in yellow were to result in a nothing. And when would that happen? That would, but one, one case of that would happen is basically an eval of t2, eval of t2 results into a nothing. Right? If eval of t2 results in a nothing, then the entire the entire expression is going to be nothing, and this will result back into a nothing. And this entire function, this anonymous function that takes in as a parameter x results back into nothing, meaning that this entire thing over here is also results back into, into a nothing. Okay. So uh, so with that. With that, uh, uh, let's just 
proceed forward again, let's say a value of t2 resulted in something which was just of y. So I extract the y out, I feed it into this function, into this anonymous function over here, and then I perform x divided by y over here. Okay, but again, before I do that, uh, uh, what I have over here is um, I have a condition that says uh, um, uh, x divided by y and return of that. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, the way it's going to work is uh, if uh, if my um, if x divided by y actually results into some kind. Uh, okay, so let's 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 do it this way. This piece over here. This piece over here, this is y. If this actually results into, let's say this resulted into into uh, eval t two resulted into just of zero. If it resulted into just of zero, then the y y in this case is actually a zero. If we just need to add a certain set of a conditional expression uh, at this point, uh, so just one thing that I'm missing missing in this uh, in this space over here before doing the actual division is just checking for whether y is actually equal to zero or not. So uh, in this space, we will have some code, some some code that will say if y is actually equal equal to zero, if y is actually equal equal to zero, then then you would actually actually return back nothing, nothing else else. I would then have a return of x divided by y. Okay, so. I hope this was a little bit useful and understanding how I can take this entire piece of code over here and getting it translated, translated into into something something of this kind where I'm using the bind operator. But but the most the most important piece, at least in, at least in my my opinion here, is that what I've done here is that by using by using the bind operator, I've kind of separated, I've kind of separated all the error related logic. All the error related logic is something that is now taken care by the bind operator. I can just look at my actual actual code over here, and in some sense, I can just concentrate on the actual value that has been passed along, along this along this uh, bind uh, uh, along this set of uh, uh, bind uh, operators. So, for instance, when I'm saying eval of t1, I, I'm really at this point not concentrating if anything could go wrong with it because I have the bind operator to take care of it. But what I'm concentrating at this point is that I'm just taking the actual value. That is part of that context. Taking an actual value, letting it flow, letting it flow, and uh, if I were to let it flow, let's say x x now holds that actual actual value, then perform eval on t two. Again, I don't worry about the actual error that might have resulted in that. But if I just if I'm just concerned with the actual value, which is in this case y, then I can take that y passing along further down my chain into this uh, sub 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 method over here or this nested nested method here. And then I perform the x divided by y here. And if any point, if any point something goes wrong in this uh, in this uh, in this code over here, then I have the bind operator. I have my bind operator that actually takes care of it. It takes care of it by 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 returning back a nothing if actually any anything goes goes wrong with it. So we're going to have some more examples coming up in subsequent videos, and um, that will hopefully allow us to tie up and uh, get a better better understanding on uh, on monads.